Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have a fall DIYs for my coffee bar. Now I was thinking like pumpkin spice latte, falling leaves, apple cider, everything fun that reminds me of fall. So I'm going to take you through all my DIYs today. The first one we're going to start with this cute little chunky um, coffee cup of pumpkin spice latte. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I am just removing the bow. I did kind of tear the paper on there a little bit, but no big deal. I kind of wanted to cover that part anyway. Um, I like the orange plaid on the background of the cup, but the rest of it, I'm gonna try to update to make it look a little bit more high end. And so I just kind of sanded it down a little bit. And then to cover that top part of the cup, I'm gonna use one of these little synthetic burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. I love crafting with these. They're so easy to cut because they kind of have like a plastic lining on the inside. So I'm just gonna cut down like a little rectangular piece here and use that for the top of my cup. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the seam on there. Um, it's gonna give me a straight line for this. And then I just kind of have to cut it down to size and it's gonna be just that little plastic cup topper that goes on the top of a plastic cup. So I just flipped it over and kind of sketched that out with a Sharpie on the back of it. And then just trim that down. That'll at least get me the top and the sides, and then I can always cut the bottom a little bit shorter too. So I'm doing really traditional fall DIYs today with lots of oranges and browns and wood colors. And I really love how this all came together. My coffee bar looks great. I just switched it out from my lemon theme, which I had this summer, which was really fun but I wanted to get one for fall to give you guys lots of crafting ideas. So I just cut down this top part, you know, just kind of arching it down a little bit. And I'm just gonna hot glue that over the top and um, we kind of solved all the damage there with the ripped paper anyway. And I think that looks better than like the brown paper. Now for the little cozy thing that goes around the cup, I thought we could use some of this faux leather from the Dollar Tree. This one is ivory, so I think that'll kind of make it really pop. So I'm going to cut out a little square of this. I've been crafting with the faux leather a lot lately. I'm a big fan of it. It's so easy to craft with. It's so easy to cut and you can just flip it over like this, cut it down to size. There are little bump outs on the side of this cup where you can kind of know where to cut it. So I'm just kind of sketching that out on the back. And has your store got fall DIYs in yet at Dollar Tree? Some of mine are still barely have any of it out. Other stores have it all out and they have so many cute new things this year. And I wanted to take some of these things like this one and just kind of show you how you can DIY it and make it even better. But some of them are so cute. I don't have to do anything to you. You'll find out today. Now to glue it down, I didn't really want to um, have any lumps or anything from the hot glue on this, but I wanted something kind of strong. So I'm using tacky glue from the Dollar Tree and a paintbrush and I just paint that with the glue and then lay the leather right on top. It's gonna give me a, a nice smooth surface. And I think the little cup is already looking so much better. I just wanna kind of smooth that out clean up any excess tacky glue that might be peeking out. And then to replace the little pumpkin that was on the pumpkin spice latte, I'm gonna use one of these leather tags. They have these again this year at Dollar Tree and I love them, they're so cute. This one says blessed. And it's like, uh, you know, leather carving. And I'm gonna use tacky glue to attach it too. Sometimes these are a little hard to hot glue down, especially the faux leather to faux leather I've noticed, so. Gonna do a nice thick layer of the tacky glue and just kind of center that on my little cup cozy there. And I think it's looking really cute. I think the final touch would be a little bit of raffia. So I'm gonna use some raffia from the Dollar Tree. 
And I'm just gonna take a little piece and just tie a very simple bow. I don't want a lot of it. I just want a simple cute bow that we can kind of decorate the top. Um, I did kind of cut the uh, burlap a little crazy there on the lid. So I'll just go ahead and decorate that part of it too. I kind of wanted a bow on here anyway. So once I got it all tied and cut down the sides, I'm just gonna hot glue this over on the left side of our little pumpkin spice latte cup. And this DIY is complete. I think it is so cute. And this is a great start for our coffee bar today. I have a coffee bar that I have DIY'd. I took like a $12 um, or more from Goodwill and um, some removable wallpaper and I like did my own coffee bar. I have a video about that. I did it like a year and a half ago, I think. And I love changing it out for different seasons. It's so fun. And I think this is the first time I've ever done just a fall theme for my coffee bar. So it's super fun. Okay, the next DIY, check out this beautiful pumpkin from the Dollar Tree this year. I love it, love it. Now, normally, you know, I'm a big fan of blue, but I'm doing kind of traditional color, fall colors today for my coffee bar. So I don't really like the blue beads on there, but I love everything else about this pumpkin. It's a nice size. Now I've never taken one of these apart before. So I kind of disconnected the bottom first to see if I could remove the beads there to replace them. But actually that's all one piece there at the bottom. So what you wanna do is you want to um, disconnect it from the top. So I had already disconnected it from the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of, I tried to bend it to see if it would break easily, but you know, the wire was super thick. So that was not gonna work. I'm gonna have to remove it right and just try to repair like any damage that I did there. And it does come right out of the top. So I just kind of started from the wrong end. And I'm just going to take all of those beautiful blue beads off there. I will save those for another DIY for sure. But I wanted this to be a little bit more traditional color. And so we're going to switch it out to some more Dollar Tree beads. I am trying to fix my wire here. <laughs> trying. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the other side and remove all the beads from the, that one as well. But I love the colors of the leaves and the material on the pumpkin frame. And I even love the little bow on there. I think it's really cute. I just wanted something like stained brown or something like that. And I found these little round wood beads from the Dollar Tree that are already stained and everything. So I think they'll be perfect. I picked up two packages of them. They have 15 in each bag. And I think I used all but one. I guess we'll find out here in just a second. <laughs> so I'm just gonna string them all on the left side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and string the other package on the other side. And then we're going to reattach that to the pumpkin. What I'm gonna do is, this is the large piece. I'm not really gonna hang this at my coffee bar. I'm gonna kind of lean it against the back wall. And I think it's gonna be really cute because it's not real busy, so it can kind of peek out from other items. Now it's just a matter of reattaching the bottom. Now, if you took this apart properly, you wouldn't need to do this step, but I'm just gonna use some twine and tie it, flip it, tie it a couple times just to make sure that it's really secure and that that's not gonna go anywhere. And I will go back and cover that up in just a second too. And now it's just a matter of putting my little wires back in these little sleeves. It's a little tricky to find the opening, but once you do, there it is. Now I thought it was a little, um, it needed to be a little bit shorter. And so I did remove one bead there. So I used 14 beads on each side. Let me go ahead and slide this one in too. To replace that, that would look really good with like the raw wood beads too. Um, I didn't have any all in the same size. And so I thought this would be a little bit easier with the stained wood beads that I had. Just making sure it's all put back exactly the way it was back when it had those pretty blue beads. And it does kind of want to slip out a little bit. So I am going to attach that with a little bit of hot glue. Kind of fixing the bow that's already on there. I think it's so pretty. I don't think it needs anything else. And I think that looks really good. The only area I don't like is the very bottom there where I kind of expose the wire down there. 
So I am going to patch that up, but otherwise I think the pumpkin is perfect. It's got like a brown felt pumpkin stem, so I like that part as well. The cover, I'm going to use that same little burlap bag that we used before, and I'm just going to cut down a little tiny piece, and we are just going to fix this with a little bit of hot glue. Just gluing it to the front, we're going to turn it over and glue the other side. Now, have you seen these at your Dollar Tree? Do they come in any of the other colors besides the blue beads? Because if they do, you could probably skip the re-beading, but I kind of wanted to show you that you could change it out if you needed to, and if you wanted to do more of a traditional fall color display. So I think that looks good. I think that's ready to go for the coffee bar. It's really simple, but really cute. And again, the leaves on there seem like really high quality um, for something from the Dollar Tree. And this is how it turned out. I'm going to kind of show you how all the DIYs look individually. And then later on in the video, I'm going to show you how the whole coffee bar came together. I think it turned out really cute and it makes me really excited for fall. And uh, I really needed to craft these DIYs because I just took my son to college and I'm so bummed out. I cannot believe it. <laughs> okay, the next item that I found at the Dollar Tree is this really cute pumpkin spice latte sign. I don't really need a hanger on there and I don't really want to do anything with the beads. So you know what? I'm just going to pull that out. Now this says autumn leaves and lattes, please. I think that's so cute. I just wanted to DIY it a little bit to make some changes to it to make it go with my coffee bar decor. So the first thing is I thought the frame was a little bit light. So I'm just staining it a little bit darker with some antique wax by Waverly. Um, it's a little tricky to do it with this like kind of like sealed wood from the Dollar Tree, but it actually works if you put like just a thin layer on there wipe off the excess with a paper towel, let it dry. Um, you can use a heat gun if you need to. Um, and don't touch it because you'll get like fingerprints or whatever in it. Um, but it did stain it slightly, which is what I was going for. It's going to kind of make it match all the other um, colors of wood that we have used today. So I got all four sides. I made sure to get the inside edges as well. Trying not to get any on that great picture behind it. I like all the colors in there, the reds and the oranges and stuff like that. Now I want to change out the little pumpkin spice latte in there too. Um, cause it's got like a little blue cozy and I don't really want to use blue today. So I'm going to cut down some more of that synthetic burlap from the back to make a cute little cozy for this little pumpkin spice latte. So even if you get something from the Dollar Tree like this, that the colors aren't really going to work for your plans, you can always change it a little bit. Now, even though that burlap has a backing, you could kind of still see the pumpkin and the blue through there. So I'm just going to mask it real quick with one coat of acrylic like ivory paint just over the existing cozy. And then I can layer that burlap on top of that so you won't be able to see through. I'm gonna use tacky glue again, kind of make this fabric lay flat. So I just use a paintbrush to kind of spread that around, kind of keep it nice and neat, get it exactly where I want it, and then lay in my burlap right on top. Now I do want a pumpkin on there like there was before. So I'm going to use some of those cute little pumpkin stickers from the Dollar Tree to complete the look. One was a little bit smaller than the other ones. And so that's what I'm going to use. They are really sticky. So I didn't use any glue on that. I just peeled and stick. And otherwise, I think that the sign is perfect for my coffee bar. It's got the pumpkin spice lattes. It's got the autumn leaves. Two of the three things that we're going for today. So this is how it turns out. No trace of blue, so it totally goes with my color scheme. And with the close-up picture, you can kind of see how the stain of the frame definitely changed. Um, and I think it looks a little bit better now. What do you guys think? So that's my super easy little sign for my coffee bar. This would also be fantastic for a fall tear tray. Fall tear trays, I'm going to have to start thinking about those next. Now check out this adorable sign. I told you they had some cute stuff in the fall aisle at Dollar Tree. This one's perfect. It's got the orange and white plaid. Love it. 
It's got the medium color wood pumpkin on the front. It says, hello, fall. No misspellings. We're ready to go. The only thing is I wanted to add a little bit darker brown. So I am going to replace the raffia bow on there with just the strap from one of those little leather ornaments just to give me a little bit darker color. But this was just totally optional, not really necessary at all because it was so cute and perfect. So I just take that existing little hanger from the leaf and I am just going to tie a simple bow in that, trying to make sure that like the leather is on the outside of my bow. So you kind of have to flip it about halfway through the bow and then just trim down the tails. Just a fun little um, addition there. I've already kind of used a raffia bow. I don't want to go too crazy with a raffia, but I like it with a raffia as well. And I just reattached a little leather strap to the top. And I told you this one was perfect. It really doesn't need anything. Um, I just decided to add a little bit darker color of brown to it. I thought about kind of distressing the hello fall part, but you know what? I wanted you to be able to read it. So I think we're going to leave it as is. So there's the little Hello Fall pumpkin. They, I was just blown away by how many new things they have this year. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to bring back a lot of the staples that they normally have for fall. Um, because again, my stores are kind of a hot mess. It's like boxes everywhere. But hopefully they will get them all out soon. You'll have to let me know in the comments below whether your stores have a good fall selection. Now the next item, the little wheelbarrow, actually from the Target dollar spot, but look at this. It was only $5. The color is perfect. It's a wheelbarrow. I think that's going to be really cute for fall. And then I decided to put my own spin on it. I thought everybody's probably filling these with pumpkins. What if we do something different, like fill it with fall leaves? Because that kind of makes sense, a wheelbarrow for all leaves that you clean up from your yard. And, um, well, we don't <laughs> here in Florida, but I used to back when we used to live in the Midwest and up in the Northeast. But what I'm going to do is kind of fill it up. So I don't have to use tons of leaves. I'm going to use just some white pebbles from the Dollar Tree, fill it up about two thirds of the way full. And also kind of weigh the little wheelbarrow down, make it not so tippy. And then these are the leaves I'm going to use. They're like, some are white. Some are kind of more orangish. Um, I'm gonna mix them all together and we're just gonna fill up the whole wagon. I want it to look like just a wagon full of over um, lapping leaves falling out of the sides. Now there's different colors, different sizes. You can kind of arrange yours as is. The only issue I was having was trying to keep them in there the way that I wanted to, wanted them to be. So I do a little bit of arranging once I get my first package in here. And I noticed that it really is helpful if you like hot glue, maybe the top couple ones, any ones that you want to kind of stay put um, to keep them from falling out. So I started hot gluing in that one. Now, this little um, greenery bundle from Dollar Tree, same leaves. This one has pumpkins on it. I'm just going to save the pumpkins for another project, but I did want more leaves because, again, I want it to be really full. It's going to make the piece a little bit taller for my coffee bar shelf and make you be able to see what is in the little wheelbarrow. I thought about, like, labeling the side or something, but I kind of wanted to keep it simple. And um, I think it's going to be fine with that great pop of orange. I had it all like organized like I thought I liked, but then I kind of flipped some around. I decided I wanted a little bit more height. And again, hot gluing it together is kind of the key here to keep it from all falling out like that. <laughs> Maybe just a few more. Some of those leaves had like little plastic um, messiness on the back of them. But if you just pull on those little plastic tabs, they'll come right off and clean that up. Because otherwise you're going to see that through your leaf. Um, especially the top ones. I wanted it to look nice and clean. And I think that's finally enough. I used one and a half maybe of the little branches but this is how it turned out i think it's so cute how cute is that little wheelbarrow 
I don't get a lot of things from Target Dollar Spot. There are two things that I got from there today though, but I love both of them. And I think this was definitely worth $5. Isn't it cute? It would be really cute with pumpkins too, but again, I wanted to do something a little different. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know about my Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below. You'll find out when I post new videos and you'll get to see what everyone else has been crafting. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and threads. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. And I would love to see you over there. Now I also found this great item at Dollar Tree this year. It's called the fresh apple cider like jar. And I love it, but I wanted to update it slightly to see if we can make it look a little bit better. So I'm just gonna remove the rope. I like that though, so I'm gonna save it. So I just used a little heat to pull it off. And then I was hoping that I could darken the bottle a little bit to kind of make it look like an old dark jug of cider and less like that like medium color wood. And so I'm just using Antique Wax by Waverly and going over all of the wood parts to see if we can start to stain that a little bit darker. Now, I also kind of wanted to just stress my label. And this was kind of a process because I kind of distressed it. Um, you know, using like a paper towel to kind of wipe off the excess, it's really kind of hard to distress um, the paper like that though. Um, then I'm gonna go over all of the dark parts one more time. I let that dry and it did darken it a little bit, but I thought it could be a little bit darker. So we're gonna try to stain it one more time. And I'm also gonna update the stopper on the top of the cider to kind of make that look a little bit cuter too, but I really don't change this one that much. As you can see, I decided to stress my label all over um, by just using Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush. And I really made it look old and I ended up not liking that, but you'll see I can fix it still. <laughs> Now for the cork, I thought some of this adhesive cork from Dollar Tree would be perfect. And mine had like bent back paper on it anyway. So I thought if I made a new cork here to attach to the front, that would be super cute. So I just cut down a little piece of that cork and then just cutting it down to size, just kind of using the little cider jar for reference until I think that looks like a cute little cork. I am making it a little bit longer than what is on the picture, but otherwise it's ready to go. Once I get it the right size, all you gotta do is peel off the back and stick it on there. Super cute way to add just a little detail to a Dollar Tree product. And again, I kind of liked the heavy duty rope um, bow they had on there. So let's just go ahead and reuse this now that I got my bottle stained a little bit darker. And I got it done like this and I was like, you know, I don't know. Let me distress the label a little bit more. So I distressed the label a little bit more. And then I was like, it looks good and old, but it doesn't really match what else I've done today. So no big deal. It's not too late. <laughs> you got a little bit of wiggle room with this stuff. And so I'm just using a baby wipe and I do want it to be distressed slightly around the edges and around the apple and stuff like that. But most of it, I want it to be white. I think it's gonna kind of just go with the decor on the coffee bar a little bit better this way. So again, I didn't really change too much of this. I just darkened the bottle, added the cork and slightly distressed the label. I think it looks better now. So as long as it's not super dry, you can definitely wipe that off the Dollar Tree signs, but I'm happy with it now. I think it looks better like this. And here it is, my little jug of apple cider. I have done an apple themed coffee bar for fall, I believe last year. And um, I've also done an apple themed tear tray for fall. I love doing apple DIYs. They're so fun for fall, I think. But isn't this bottle cute? Dollar Tree, I'm telling ya, they are bringing it. And speaking of Dollar Tree, check out this sign. Okay, so it's perfect. It is huge. It says hot apple cider. It's got a recipe on it. I don't have to do anything to this. The wood is perfect. I actually read the sign and there's no misspellings or anything. You can't believe it. 
And I usually use a giant coffee bar sign above my coffee bar if you've watched a lot of my coffee bar videos. But today, since I had a couple of really large signs from the Dollar Tree, I don't have to use that sign. So I didn't have to DIY that, but I wanted to give you a close up view of how cute this sign is so you can try to find it. They also have it for like, I think pumpkin pie, maybe, oh, is it apple pie or cherry pie maybe? but absolutely adorable for $8.25. And it had a hanger on there, but I'm actually just gonna lean mine against the wall. Now, this is the other large sign that I got at Dollar Tree. It's just a large cutting board and it says, hello fall. I think it's kind of pretty already, but it doesn't really match what I've got going on. And so I'm gonna DIY it. And I absolutely love how this one turned out. So the first thing I did was I removed the raffia bow here trying not to cause too much damage to the paper. And my hello fall sign was slightly damaged, um, a little tear in the paper, and I wanted it distressed anyway. So what I'm doing is just mixing ivory um, acrylic paint with water, and I'm just gonna whitewash the little sign here on front. And as you can see, this is a pretty large cutting board. Um, and so I'm gonna do this on the top shelf of my coffee bar as well with that apple cider sign. So I think this will be good as well, but I did want a light whitewash all over. I think that distress, I just wiped off the excess with a paper towel, um, will hide any damage to the sign and it softened it as well. Now the wood part of the cutting board was way too light for what I'm doing today. So again, Antique Wax by Waverly. What I'm trying to do is I want to stain the back sign. You could remove the signs and put them back together, but I kind of wanted to stress all of it. So I think I'm just gonna leave it together. I'm just trying to keep my like wood grain all going in the same direction as the wood paper that's already on the cutting board. And it's okay if I distress the hello fall sign because I kind of want to distress that anyway. And since I've already started a whitewash on that. So I go all the way around the frame, just staining that Dollar Tree faux wood just a little bit darker. And then I just lightly dry brush all over just to kind of age this sign. And I really love how it turned out. I think it looks so much better than it started with. So I just followed that up with a paper towel, like a dry paper towel just to kind of blend any of the excess, like distressing around the edges. Didn't want it distressed too heavily, but just enough. And I think that looks pretty good. I got um, my son all moved into his dorm yesterday and I'm so sore today. I carried refrigerators and all kinds of things. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't believe it. He's only an hour and a half away from home though. So that makes me feel a little bit better. And he texted me like 30 times today and he FaceTimed me. So that helps, but thank you for all your kind comments. Okay, so I reattached the raffia bow that was on there before. And then I just took some twine that I had and made a new handle for the cutting board as well. And this DIY is ready to go. I think it looks so much better with that color of wood. And see, you really can stain that Dollar Tree like faux wood paper. And I really like the little hello fall sign. I like the colors on it and I like it distressed too. So I'm kind of glad that I distressed that with both a whitewash and with Antique Wax by Waverly. But this is how it turned out and it looks fantastic on the top of my coffee bar. Now I needed a little sign for my second shelf and so I thought I would DIY one. I'm gonna use some of these great napkins from Dollar Tree. How pretty are these? It's like just some pumpkins, some sunflowers, very fallish. And I'm gonna use one of those little palette signs from the Dollar Tree that's already kind of like a medium wood. So I don't really need to do anything with that. The only issue was is that my napkin was square and my sign is rectangular, but I think we can make it work. So. I just unfold my napkin, cut it into fourths, and then the only tricky part is trying to separate the plies. Um, I actually even looked at the package to think, is this two ply? It didn't say, and I'm like, surely it is. Every napkin that I've got at the Dollar Tree is always at least two ply. So I decided to rip it, and that's when I was able to get the second ply, because when you decoupage with 
napkins, you really want to make sure that you only use one ply. It's going to make everything go so much smoother. So I was able to separate that. And I'm going to show you, I want to do like a tearing technique on this, which is really easy to do. All you get to use is water and a paintbrush and just paint, you know, exactly where you want to cut it. That way, since I'm going kind of like square to rectangular, um, it's going to look a little bit more intentional with, you know, the feathered edge instead of cutting it directly. So you just get it wet and then you can pull it and it will tear right where you got it wet. Um, I'm trying to like just go around the outline of the picture and try to avoid as much white background as I can. And I just want it to look nice and feathered and I think that turned out really good. So um, I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit more rectangular in shape by kind of peeling off a little bit here on the bottom. If you do have overlap and you're using a rectangular sign like me, you can always, it's really easy to clean it up, but I think we're pretty good. Now to start, I'm going to do a very thin coat of Mod Podge all over the front of the sign, not just where the pumpkin is, but all over because I want that same matte finish on the final project. Now this does have the little slap boards in there, so I was trying not to get too much Mod Podge trapped down in there. And then I'm just going to carefully lay my little Dollar Tree pumpkin napkin, centering it here on my little rectangular sign. And if you don't want, you know, um, to cause any damage, you can use plastic wrap for that. But um, I just made sure my fingers were really dry and then I just smoothed that out. It really went on really well. I love the texture of decoupaging with napkins and the feathered edge technique really worked well on this. So I've got it really good and down flat. So I give it a dry with my heat gun and then I want to cut it where the slat boards are just to kind of make it look a little bit more rustic. So I just use a razor blade and I just cut right into that groove, carefully cutting my dry napkin now. I also use my Cricut weeder to kind of get any material that might be stuck in the grooves there from the napkin. Just kind of clean it out, clean out some of the glue that might be stuck in there too. It's just going to make it look a little bit better in the end. How cute is that napkin? And then I'm just going to sand the top and bottom, make sure that I got a straight cut. And even though this was a square napkin, I got it to fit on that rectangular side very pretty easily. Just cleaning up that little crack and both of the signs one more time. And I think this sign is ready to go. What I'm going to do is it doesn't have a hanger or anything like that. And I kind of need to stick it on my wall because one of my pieces, the little wheelbarrow was not quite tall enough for my bottom shelf. But I think combined with this cute little pumpkin sign, we can make it work. So I'm hanging it on my removable wallpaper. And so I'm just going to use some of these little um, double-sided tapes from the Dollar Tree to attach it to the wall. Um, hopefully that won't cause any damage, but look how pretty it is. Isn't that cute? And this would be so cute for a fall tear tree as well. Don't be afraid to try like the tearing method there. Whenever you decoupage with napkins, it was so easy to do. And I love the end result. I think it's beautiful. And I love that you can see the wood grain like through the pumpkins too. Um, because the napkin is so thin. So I attached it to the wall. This is my removable wallpaper back there. And I already have it up. Okay, I always love to do like pennant banners or garlands on my coffee bar. And so I'm going to show you how to do a really cute little fall like rag garland. We're going to use a Dollar Tree scarf. I just cut down some twine the same length that I need for my top shelf of my coffee bar. And then I'm just going to lay out my um, little fall wreath. It's so pretty. It's white with the leaves and the acorns on there and like the orange and the reds and the yellows. And I am just going to start here and cut out like a rectangular piece. I tried on the other end to rip this and it didn't want to rip so you're definitely gonna have to use scissors if you're going to use a dollar tree scarf so i just cut out a strip and then i use that one for reference then i could kind of see how big i need it to be and they don't need to be perfect so i'm just going to cut the rest of this into strips 
I would say mine were like maybe like one and a half to two inches wide. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole thing. I do um, usually like to use like an odd number of these. So I think I end up having one extra here at the end, but that is a good start. Now I want it all frayed and looking like rags. So I do go ahead and cut the top and the bottom seam off there too from the scarf. So now all the edges are frayed. This actually frays really well on its own. You don't really have to do any distressing. And then to make it a little bit faster, I'm just doing like three of these at a time, just cutting the top and bottom seams off of them. And then we can make a really cute little rag garland just by tying these to Dollar Tree twine. I don't know if I've ever made like a rag garland like this before, but I love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. So I just find the middle of my twine and then I can start there. I always like to do an odd number. So I always like to have like one thing in the middle. I just loop it like that, pull the two tails through, pulling that to the other side, making sure it's nice and tight. So I loop it like that, pull it over, take the two tails, pull it through the hole, and then pull the two tails tight. So when you're lining it up on there, it's kind of opposite what you think because you have the tails going the wrong way at first. But once you do the little loop and tie, everything's gonna be laying on the same side. I thought this would lay a little flatter than just tying it in a traditional knot around. This is more kind of like a macrame thing and it actually worked really well for this. So I'm trying to fill this up, but I'm also leaving gaps in between because I do want to use another fabric too to kind of break up the little fall um, fabric and give me another color. So I'm trying to keep them equally distant apart, <laughs> but filling up most of it. I think I used a total of seven of the scarf. And as you can see, it's already kind of fraying and stuff like that. Now for the other part of it, I'm gonna use burlap. Now the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, it was almost the perfect size. So even though it has wire on there, I think that this is gonna work well for me. And it's kind of a synthetic burlap, so it's not super fray. So I think this is gonna work well. So I add an extra piece. So I just use that for reference, and then I can start cutting that down. I did a total of seven of the fall um, scarf ones. So I'm gonna do a total of eight on these. That way I can have burlap on each end and then burlap between each different section. It's just a matter of cutting eight of these down. It almost took my entire nine foot roll. So make sure you have a new roll if you're using the Dollar Tree burlap. And then I do have to cut the wires off the side to give you that like frayed look. And I think the wires would definitely get in the way for what we're gonna do with it. So easy peasy, just trim it down. Definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of the more frayed it looks the better. But just like before, I loop it with the tails on the wrong side and then pull it through. And I think that looks pretty good. It kind of breaks up all of that white and orange, adds another color. And I've used a little bit of burlap here and there on the coffee bar today, so I think that'll tie in. I'm gonna do a couple garlands today. Um, this one is gonna be for my top tier of my coffee bar. And then the other one I decided to put somewhere different and I'll show you that as well. My coffee like makers are both blue, so I'm hoping they don't clash too much with this because I usually bring blue into my coffee bar theme, but really wanted to kind of do traditional for you guys here today. So it's just a matter of trimming these all down, all eight pieces. Gonna speed this up for you and then we can just start tying these on to our banner. Now, you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments below, do you guys, are you guys big pumpkin spice latte fans or pumpkin spice fans? I like um, like the Coffee Mate pumpkin spice creamer. I like to do like the zero sugar um, and I love it. I also like like the skinny syrup that has the pumpkin spice. Um, basically anything pumpkin spice in my coffee, I'm a huge fan of, and I have already started. This got me in the mood, <laughs> but 
I always make my own coffee at home. I don't like buying it out. I think it's just crazy expensive. Um, but I do enjoy a good cup of coffee. I'll have to try some other things. I know a lot of people do like pumpkin spice cupcakes and stuff like that. I think they even have donuts and stuff like that. It's just such a fun theme. And I was going to do just pumpkin spice for this coffee bar today, but I decided to mix it up a little and do pumpkin spice, falling leaves, and apple cider. So we got all of them tied on there. I think that looks pretty good. They're all hanging the same direction. You do kind of have to arrange them a little bit once you get them on there, but if you need to slide them back and forth, they easily slide back and forth if you don't have them tied too tightly. And this is how it looks on the top um, shelf of my coffee bar. Um, I went ahead and attached it. I just hot glue the twine to the edges because I'm always hanging banners on there. And I think it looks really cute and ties everything together. What do you guys think about my little rag garland? Now for my other garland, I told you I had two. I'm going to use the little wood leaf ornaments from the Dollar Tree. These are like maple leaves. And I always like to do an odd number, so I'm going to do five on this one. And I'm going to do a couple different staining techniques on these. So for three of them, I'm just going to use straight Antique Wax by Waverly and a makeup sponge. Absolutely so easy to stain these. And I think they look better stained than painted. And I thought we could just string some fall leaves together um, for another little garland. And I'll show you where I end up putting this one. Um, I didn't want too much going on in my second tier, my second, um, not tier, shelf of my coffee bar. But I do find a place for this one. Now for the other two, I'm going to stain it orange. So I just used some like... I think this is called jack-o-lantern acrylic paint, but I put it on with like a super wet, wet wipe so that it kind of stained it. You could still see all that wood grain through just to kind of mix it up so they're not all just brown stained wood. So I have got them all stained. I thought it would make them look even better if I used like a white paint pen and drew the little um, veins of the leaf back on there. So I'm kind of guessing where they would be by the bump outs on the leaf and just kind of filling those in. I don't think you can really screw this up. Pretty easy to do. And I'm going to do the same thing here on all five of them. And I did do kind of like a little bit different thing on each one, which I kind of liked. It kind of makes each leaf unique because they probably are. <laughs> So just kind of guessing exactly, like if they had like a branch coming out one side, they'd probably have another branch of the vein coming out the other side. And I'm going to do that on all three of the stained wood ones. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the orange ones. Now on these orange ones, I think they're really pretty. Once I got this at my coffee bar though, I was like, you know what? I think the orange is a little too light. Like I didn't really use this color of orange too much today. And so I am going to darken this up in just a minute. But for right now, it's this color of orange. So I kind of want them to sit at an angle. And so instead of using like the little twine um, pieces that come with it, I'm just going to put it directly on some Dollar Tree twine. This is some of their thinner twine little messy so I'm just going to go ahead and burn off some of the fuzzies and stuff going on there it's going to help me be able to string these and I'm just going to string them kind of like going all the same direction and I'm going to alternate so I'm going to have like you know the dark wood orange dark wood orange dark wood and the disadvantage of this is that you know, they're not going to hang flat if you don't use um, the smaller twine to tie it to the twine. But I did want mine to kind of stick out a little bit to make them look like falling leaves. And so that's what I did. Now, this is me changing the color. <laughs> and to change the color, I wanted to do more of that like reddish orange color. I have used that today. And so I just use a dot of fire red on a baby wipe. And then just wipe that over my orange, mixing the two colors together. And I liked that color a lot better. 
Now I could still kind of see where he drew the veins back on. So I just go back in with my white paint pen and just touch that up one more time. And what I'm gonna do with this one, since I'm not gonna hang it on my bottom shelf of my coffee bar, I am actually gonna string this through. I have a bar underneath my shelves that I hang coffee mugs on. And the coffee mugs for fall that I have are just plain white. I didn't DIY them. I didn't wanna go too crazy on them. So I thought we could decorate them with just these Dollar Tree wood leaves instead, just by stringing them on that bar. And this is what I'm talking about. I just kind of strung it through them. So they're all kind of like sticking out here and there and they lay pretty nice. It decorates my coffee cups a little bit without me having to do anything to them. But knowing me, I'll probably go back and use my Cricut and add, make a little bit of fall um, motif to those little white mugs. Cause right now they're a little bit plain. Now I also wanted to fill like the top of my coffee bar and I wanted it to look like falling leaves. So what we're going to do is use these little faux leather leaves from um, Dollar Tree. These are like, um, I guess like the oak leaves. I don't really want them to have the plastic sims on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim those off. And the package had a total of eight in there and I think I ended up using seven. I also picked up some of this like fun tack from the Dollar Tree. I thought this would be a really easy way to attach these to the wall to make them look like they're falling without causing any damage, I hope. Now, another thing you could do is you could string them with fishing lines. You wouldn't be able to see that. It would look like they were falling. But this is the very top of my coffee bar. And I'm showing you kind of how I arranged them to look like they're falling and um, around like the large signs that we did for the top. Now I normally have my big sign up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave my nails in there because I'm sure that sign will return. Now I need a little bit of filler, so I'm gonna use a Target Dollar Spot pumpkin and a Dollar Tree pumpkin. And then I thought maybe a pine cone would be cute too for fall. Just some little tiny pieces. And I got these pine cones at the Target Dollar Spot. I'm just gonna use one of the really small one, but you can get these at Dollar Tree too. Just a little bit of filler. And then this is the other item I got from the Target Dollar Spot. Isn't this adorable? It is an acorn basket. It was $5. I got it at the Target Dollar Spot the other day when I was buying a million things for a college dorm. And um, I thought this would be perfect for my K-Cups. It's nice and large. And I really don't have to do anything to it. It's just a matter of grabbing my K-Cups and filling it up. And I think this is such a cute, easy idea for a fall coffee bar. So we're just gonna load that up, put the little acorn lid back on. How cute is this? They also had a pumpkin one, which my son tried to talk me into the pumpkin one instead of the acorn one, but I fell in love with the acorn one. I had to have it. And this is how it looks. I didn't have to do anything to it. Functional decor, and I have plenty of room on my coffee bar to sit this next to my coffee makers. Isn't it cute? I love it. And it's got a little hook hoop on the top too to pull off the lid. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For only $4.99 a month, you can help support my channel. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos, as well as another, a few other perks, and I really appreciate it. I wanna give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Fun members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Julie Miller, Whitney Harrison, Nancy Wunner, Jan, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. And those are in the order of how long you've supported me. Okay, guys, here it is. It's time for the final reveal. You're gonna find out how cute my little fall coffee bar turned out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, comment your favorite DIY or find below, and don't forget to subscribe. Yay, we hit 20,000 subscribers. Here it is, enjoy.
Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a dying ember Everything is turning into gold When the autumn leaves are playing chasing Puts a smile up on my face They leave the branches one by one Since I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were running wild Going all the way until November Turn the Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant
for making it all the way to the end if you'd like to watch more crafty beach videos youtube thinks you might enjoy this video right here <laughs>